directed to Susan. And Susan, just to let you know, I already mentioned that this is the 10th anniversary of uh, You Know What Happened with Elliot. And I actually sent uh, Susan an email that day and I said, slow news day, and she emailed back, oy vey. <laughs> um, oh, and Susan, I also mentioned, gave a brief allusion to the uh, Cuomo team scandal from the 90s. Those are good times we had at that station. We won't uh, mention that much. But I um, just wanted to thank Supervisor Barrett. He's the supervisor of my hometown, Clifton Park. And we may not share the same party, but I will uh, note one thing. There are two Caucasian gentlemen here, and we both have, wait, I hear music, wait. And we both have Asian wives. And Phil, I don't know about you, but I've learned this much Hindi and Marathi in 12 years. I know I mentioned. Sure. Hello, Baba Manisha Bote. <laughs> Um, yeah. <laughs> That's what I know. Yeah. One thing I wanted to stress, truly wanted to stress, the important thing is start, unless you have money and name recognition, like a Senator George Amador, who built houses, who's done well for himself, start at volunteering. That's where you need to start. Um, I have a bit of a vicious wit at times, and in 2012, I took on the role as troll-in-chief for state senate candidates, uh, against the state senate candidates, uh, who had no money, no name recognition, and her key platform was effectively animal rights and being a vegan. This is not what you do to run for the state senate for the first time. And uh, she wrapped herself in the flag of minority. She happens to be Latina. And the thing is, she pissed off God knows how many members of the Latino community in her time uh, with having some uh, level of authority, or so she thought. She ended up with less than 10% of the vote in the primary. And uh, she would respond to me from the trolls, from the troll jobs I do online, and said, this is perfect, I'm taking away from your time campaigning. Uh, now to get to my friend of 25 years, I've known her twice as long as I've known my wife which should say something. Uh, can't say enough amazing things about her. I've, Susan and I, we met 1992, 1993. We worked at the NPR affiliate in Albany. And I like to say she's twice as tough as I am, because I worked there for seven years. She lasted there for 14. <laughs> she was always destined for bigger things. So after just working in radio, she went to WAMHT started the New York Now program, which won God knows how many awards, but still destined for even bigger things. An opportunity came from WCNY Public Broadcasting in Syracuse to host a daily radio show from the state capitol. You can hear the capitol press room, please correct me on the time if I'm wrong, Susan, I believe it's still 5 to 6 p.m on WVCR 88.3, Siena College's radio station. It's 88.3 WVCR is a blowtorch. You can get that station all the way up in Queensbury, Glens Falls, all the way down to the Hudson Valley, practically. It just makes me so proud to introduce my friend for half my life, Susan Arbetter. And joining Susan to ask questions is my fellow is my fellow APAPA Civic Leadership Forum Committee member, Lee Zhang, an amazing woman in her own right. Lee, Susan, thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you for coming. I have a disclaimer. All these questions were written by Michael. <laughs> uh, so what is the mission of your media outlet? So I work for a public broadcaster out of Syracuse, New York. It's WCNY Public Media. Uh, somehow I convinced this, the president and CEO to fund an NPR radio show, even though he's a PBS CEO. And my show is now on uh, 22 different NPR stations across the state. We have 100,000 listeners every day. And we're in every major market north of New York City, uh, although recently we did um, enter the New York City market on Sundays. So we're we're expanding, which is very, which is a you know good a good thing. <laughs> very nice. 
Please tune in and listen to the show. Thank you. Uh, please tell us the route you took to the world of journalism. Both of my parents are from New York City. Um, there is a large uh, Jewish population in New York City. They grew up in that population. And then they moved with me when I was three to rural Western Pennsylvania because that's where the window manufacturing industry is based. You've heard of PPG, Pittsburgh Plate Group Glass. Um, so my father was in the window manufacturing industry. Uh, I was the only Jewish person there. There was one African American family. There were no Asian American families. It was very isolating. Um, this was a community that was, uh, I would say, um, culturally intolerant. But I, I don't have great memories from that time, but I know that that's why I became a journalist, because it became very clear to me that um, civil justice, economic justice, racial justice, these are all incredibly important. This was in a very poor coal mining area in western Pennsylvania. It's the heart of where the fracking community is. Um, and I saw what rural poverty did to these people. And because of that, you know, that a lot of things come out of poverty. One of them is ignorance. And that's got to be addressed. And that's why I went into journalism. From there, I went to Boston University. I was lucky enough to, did you go there? Yes, I got my master's there. Oh, that's great. <laughs> um, which, which school? Uh, school of Education. Okay, so SED. I was in COM. So I went there uh, probably a few years earlier than you. Um, and uh, graduated from there and knew I wanted to go into news and, and I knew I wanted to do electronic journalism. And so I uh, started in Boston fell in love, uh, moved to Albany, New York, fell out of love, started at WAMC where I met Michael, and uh, then uh, the rest is history, right? Uh, which state level issues are the ones you consider most important for your readers and listeners? Um, there are a lot of state level issues that I think are really critical. One of the reasons why I wanted to do this program to begin with is because we pay so much attention to national politics, but it's actually state and municipal government that ma should matter much more to the people in this room and to my listeners. There are so many issues that these, this, these levels of government that people rarely pay attention to, but should, um, have in, for example, what do your kids get taught in, in school, K through 12? Were you for the Common Core? Were you not for the Common Core? That's all state level stuff. Um, how much money, uh, let me see, which roads are fixed? How much money does your municipal government get for roadways? How much Bundy aid does your kid get to go to college? Mm -hmm. Okay, all of these are very important. So when I decide what issues to cover, I'm trying to think of like the mom in, in a car driving her kids to, you know, some uh, soccer practice or something. What does that mom need to know to be an educated and informed citizen? What does that mom need to know uh, that's going on in Albany? Um, how can I explain that to her in a way that she'll understand and that it will make some sense to her? So I sort of consider myself an Albany to English translator. And I try to speak the language of the regular people. I figure if I can understand it, you can understand it. So I spend a lot of my time trying to understand stuff from Medicaid to taxation to what the governor put out in his budget. And all of these things, including Zex and Rex, or what I look look at every day. Good. Do you mind if I ask a question that's not written by Michael? You can ask me anything you want. <laughs> okay. What do you learn the most from covering the state of government and politics, or what do you learn the most from the journalism? Um, what, one of the things that 
I learned, uh, which is sort of unfortunate, is that there are some elected officials, and I'm certainly not all of them, um, certainly not your husband, I'm sure, who don't necessarily uh, want people to know what they're doing. So they will go out of their way to obfuscate, speak in jargon, and that really angers me. So um, I'm wholeheartedly for transparency. So I'll try to dig through all the garbage and get to the kernel of truth. That's one of the things I learned. Another thing I learned that there are a lot of politicians who come to Albany who want to do the right thing and their heart is in the right place and they are not purchased by lobbyists. And uh, these are the people who perhaps sometimes they're not in the majority, they're in the minority conferences. Still, their voice is important and I'd like to give them a platform. So just to follow up a question on what you just said, how could you tell that that politician is not honest with you and what research would you do? Well, some of them are on trial. <laughs> um, uh, some of them, their emails have been foiled by, you know, the New York Times, and you can see that they have been lying. Mm -hmm. uh, we have some combative and five state press conferences at the White House. Do you have a similar press conferences in Albany? Uh, there are, uh, unfortunately, not very many press conferences in Albany with Governor Cuomo because he has uh, taken to avoiding the Albany Press Corps. Uh, the Albany Press Corps is, I mean, the press across the state is very active and vigilant, but in Albany we cover Governor Cuomo primarily. And so we will ask a question and we'll know what the follow-up question is to ask, and then the follow-up to the follow-up, and he doesn't want to perhaps get into that. So instead he is uh, taken 